Hi guys, welcome back. I'm gonna jump in and do a gemstone, mostly because it was a topic of interest in the Facebook group, and people were trying to figure out how to do the stone, and doing a gemstone is probably one of the easiest textures that you could add to your page. It's so easy a child can do it. There's a trick to it. It's more illusional than anything else. Now this is one that I'm gonna demo that I did this is done on gray paper and gemstones always come out better on gray paper because you're not dealing with the tone. You're going to start with a circle. My circle is slightly oval because I'm going to have the gemstone facing towards me. So it's slightly oval. Then I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to do just a line. And I'm going to make a little slice of pizza. That's my starting off point. Then I'm going to sort of move around I'm making these marks wherever I'm not paying much attention to forming any sort of pattern I just want to make all these different looking triangles. Again, free form. Once you're finished with these free-flowing organic uh, triangles, then you're going to lightly put in a circle in the middle. Okay, very, very lightly. Now, of course, these lines are all very light. You can always add more later on. Now, what I like to do is I like to put a larger amount of facets on the top, these organic, just larger spaces, and then smaller down here. As the stone is facing towards you, you would see less down there. So there would be more down here. That's how I get my original drawing. Make sure you're not using a heavy black line. Uh, those lines very, very light. This is how I did the initial sketch. Now we'll go and we'll, I'll show you how I did this one, how I colored it in. I began my demo with the same circle as I used before but at this time I'm doing it on gray paper. Using a 4H pencil, I'm making my lines. I try to make the bottom facets smaller than the top, just because of the way the angle of the gemstone is. You can always add more in later. I only used one color pencil for the whole entire bottom, plus white. The gray toned paper helps darken the color and the white show up so you really begin at mid-tone. After I added in the white and then drew the aquamarine over the white, I got my mid-tone color. That makes the three tones. continued using just the white and the aquamarine until the entire bottom layer was finished. Remember, this is only the bottom layer.
By varying my hand pressure, I was able to achieve a gradient. Then I varied the triangles using different shapes and shading. Once I got enough of the bottom layer in, I started drawing in the top of the gemstone with a circle. I made sure the edges were a little bit darker so it looked like it was going inward. I left a few boxes open so that I could add in some purple. For those of you who are a little bit more advanced, we're going to keep going. This Strathmore Mixed Media Paper has tons of tooth, and I don't want to waste the tooth. So let's keep going. What I did was I sprayed this with a workable fixative. And what that means is that I set the pencil into the paper so that it's not as creamy and not as blendable. Now I'm going to work the upper layers on this. And I'm working with powdered blue, Copenhagen blue, and I'm going with, for the mid-tone, my aquamarine. If you keep see seeing two different aquamarine pencils that are slightly different, it's the same pencil. One's Barrel, one's Premier. Same difference. Barrel is the older pencils. I have a whole bunch of sets that work just as good as my premieres. So I'm going to tighten up some of these uh, facets and allow you to see it more. So I'm blending in my, my white with the powdered blue. It's only going to take it a little bit, which is good. Okay, so I can get more of a faceted look in the in the stone. Now remember this is this stage is for more advanced artists who can keep going. For you beginners you can stop up until this point. And I'm gonna just keep going with my layers, giving it a little bit more of a blended look. So I'm gonna stick you on hyperlapse and we'll see how we do when I'm done.
Here we have the Hannah Calzone jewelry box. This is just one of many books that I have that have uh, jewels in them. And there are a lot of pages on here that would be perfect for this technique. This is one page because you have all these round faceted stones. You can just get rid of the facets that are over here. This is another one that would be great for that. So instead of doing it flat, you can do it going towards the side. And your shadow could be coming in through this way and you can shadow it brightly going this way. There's a lot of ways you can use this method. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask me in the comment section below. And if you're having trouble with any of these, I'm always available on the Facebook group uh, for any individual problems that you want to show me your picture. And I hope I can help. And I'll leave the link in the description. And I will see you guys in my next video.